हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज मिनी से ठी आई होप यू ऑल आर स्टेइंग हेल्दी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हेक्चर अवल इन थियोरी ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस थियोरी इज गिवन बाय प्रोफेसर हेक्चर इन 1919. आफ्टर दैट प्रोफेसर बर्टिल ओहली इम्प्रूव दिस थियोरी इन 1953. दैट्स वाई दिस थियोरी इज नोन एज हेक्चर ऑल इन थियोरी ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस थियोरी इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड अकर्स बिकॉज कंट्रीज हैव डिफरेंट स्पेशलाइजेशन एंड रिसोर्सिस अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस थियोरी इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड अकर्स बिकॉज कंट्रीज हैव डिफरेंट स्पेशलाइजेशन एंड रिसोर्सिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल सम कंट्रीज आर अबंडेंट इन लेबर ओन द इन अदर हैंड सम कंट्रीज आर अबंडेंट इन कैपिटल According to this theory, countries those are abundant in capital and have a scarcity of labor. That country should increase the production and export of capital-intensive goods because these countries are abundant in capital. On the other hand, these countries have scarcity of labor. That's why these countries should increase the import of labor-intensive goods. For example, India is abundant of labor. means population of india is more that's why india is abundant of labor and agriculture product require more labor means production of agriculture product require more labor that's why we can say that agriculture product are labor intensive product india have abundant of labor agriculture products are labor intensive product that's why india increase the production and export of agriculture product On the other hand, India have scarcity of capital, and production of laptop, mobile require more capital. That's why uh, India do import of capital intensive product like laptop, mobile, computer, etc. Now we'll see assumptions. Two countries, two commodities, two factor of production, perfect competition, constant return to scale. That means change in output is same as change in input. full employment free trade without any restriction no transport cost factors can move within any country but cannot move between two countries and uh, factor supplies are different in uh, countries for example one country have abundant of capital on the other hand other country have abundant of labor goods are classified on the basis of factor intensity one good is capital intensive other good is labor intensive we can explain this theory by two terms physical terms and price terms first of all we will explain this theory in price terms according to price terms a country where capital is cheap but labor is expensive that country will be considered capital abundant country please listen carefully according to price term a country where price of capital is very low but price of labor is very high that country will be considered capital abundant country because here price of capital is very low no matter what quantities of capital or labor they have here we will only consider price if price of capital is low but price of labor is high that means country is capital abundant country on the other hand a country where labor is cheap means price of labor is very low but price of capital is very high that country will be considered labor abundant country no matter what quantities of capital or labor they have we will only consider price if price of labor low and price of capital is high that means country is labor abundant country so in order to know price of capital as compared to price of labor we will calculate ratio of price of capital to the ratio of price of labor and here we assume we have only two countries germany and india first of all we will calculate ratio of price of capital to the ratio of price of labor in germany the formula of calculating this pk over pl pk means price of capital pl means price of labor suppose price of capital in germany is 3 and price of labor is 5 a 3 over 5 is equal to 0.6 0.6 will be called ratio of price of capital to the ratio of price of labor in germany same way we will calculate ratio of price of capital to the ratio of price of labor in india 
and the answer will uh, 1.6 here you can see 1.6 is more than 1 more than 0 0.6 that means the ratio price of capital to the ratio price of labor is less in germany so we can say the price of capital is less in germany as compared to price of labor if price of uh, capital is less in Germany, but price of labor is high in Germany, so Germany will be called a capital abundant country. If one country is capital abundant, that means other country will uh, labor abundant. So we can say that India will labor abundant and Germany will capital abundant country. Now with the help of this diagram, we will understand price terms. Here we assume we have only two countries, Germany and India. Germany is capital abundant country that means Germany have more capital India is labor abundant country India have more labor here we assume we have only two commodities automobile and textile automobile is capital intensive goods that means in production of automobile we need more capital and textile is labor intensive good in production of textile we need more labor in this diagram on x x we have labor and y x we have capital this PL, this one is a factor price line of Germany and this one P1, L1, this one is a factor price line of India. And we have two isoquant AA and BB. This isoquant mainly shows a combination, different combination of labor and capital which give us same amount of output. First of all, we see if Germany want to produce one unit of automobile and one unit of textile, then how much capital Germany need? If Germany want to produce one unit of automobile, then Germany need capital O n. On the other hand, if Germany want to produce one unit of textile, then Germany need O n one capital. You can see in production of automobile, we need more capital as compared to production of textile. You can see in production of automobile, we need O n capital, but in production of textile, we need O n one capital. So in production of automobile, we need more capital and Germany is capital abundant country. That's why Germany definitely go for production of automobile. According to this theory, Germany should increase production and export of automobile because Germany is abundant in capital and automobile is capital intensive goods. Now we will see how much labor Germany need if Germany want to produce one unit of automobile and one unit of textile. If Germany want to produce one unit of automobile, then Germany need OM labor. On the other hand, if Germany want to produce one unit of textile, then Germany need OM1 labor. So here you can see requirement of labor is more in the production of textile as compared to production of automobile. For the production of textile, we need OM1 labor, but for the production of automobile, we need only OM labor. So requirement of labor is less in production of automobile. And Germany is a, a capital abundant country, but have a scarcity of labor. That's why Germany should not increase the production of textile. Germany should reduce the production of textile and start doing import of textile. Now we will see how much capital India need if India want to produce one unit of automobile and one unit of textile. In this diagram, this T1 and T2 shows equilibrium of India. And this dotted line, this one, this one, this one represent India. If India want to produce one unit of automobile, then India need OR capital. But if India want to produce one unit of textile, then India need OR1 capital. Here you can see OR is more than OR1. That means if India want to produce one unit of automobile, then India need more capital. But India have scarcity of capital. That's why India will not produce automobile. India will start doing of import of automobile. Now we will see how much labor India require if India want to produce one unit of automobile and one unit of textile. If India want to produce one unit of automobile, then India need OQ1 labor. On the other hand, if India want to produce one unit of textile, then India need OQ labor. Here you can see OQ is more than OQ1. 
दैट मीन्स रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ लेबर इज मोर इन प्रोडक्शन ऑफ टेक्सटाइल एज कम्पेयर टू प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑटोमोबाइल एंड इंडिया इज लेबर अबंडेंट कंट्री एंड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ टेक्सटाइल रिक्वायर मोर लेबर दैट्स वाई इंडिया डेफिनेटली गो फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ टेक्सटाइल एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस थेरी इंडिया विल इंक्रीज प्रोडक्शन एंड एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ टेक्सटाइल नाउ वी विल सी दिस थेयर इन फिजिकल टर्म्स दैट्स वाई वी विल टॉक अबाउट क्वान्टिटीज नोट प्राइजेज here we will see how much quantities of one factor one country has as compared to other factor here we will consider quantities of factor of production in relative term not in absolute term means here we will take quantities of factor of production as compared to other factor for example how much quantities of capital germany has as compared to labor if percentage of capital is more in country as compared to percentage of labor then this country will known as capital abundant country on the other hand if percentage of labor is more in any country as compared to percentage of capital then this country is known as labor abundant country suppose we have two country germany and india uh, germany have 100 uh, capital and 200 labor india have 20 capital and 1000 labor first of all we will calculate capital labor ratio of germany k over l k is capital l is labor germany have 100 capital and 200 labor 100 over 200 is equal to 0.5 that means germany per labor have 0.5 capital now we will see capital labor ratio of india uh, 20 capital india have and 1000 labor 20 over 1000 is equal to 0.02 Here you can see 0.5 is more than 0.02. That means Germany per labor have more capital. Germany have more percentage of capital as compared to labor. So Germany will be called capital abundant country and India will be called labor abundant country. And we have only two commodities: automobile and textile. Automobile is capital in intensive goods. That's why Germany should produce automobile and textile is labor intensive goods. And India should produce textile. now we will see diagram here we have two countries germany and uh, india and two commodities automobile and textile in this diagram on x axis we have textile and y axis we have automobile this one ab this is a production possibility curve of germany pp is price line of germany this a1 a1 this one is production possibility curve of india p2 p2 is price line of india production possibility curve mainly tell us combination of two goods which country can produce with its given resources so here you can see uh, maximum quantities of automobile uh, germany can produce oa but maximum quantities of automobile india can produce oa1 you can see oa is more than oa1 that means germany can produce more automobile but why because germany is capital abundant country and automobile is capital intensive goods here in x axis you can see india can produce maximum quantities of textile ob1 and germany can produce maximum quantities of textile is ob you can see ob1 is more than ob that means india can produce more textile because india is a, a labor abundant country and textile is labor intensive goods so in this diagram this e shows equilibrium of germany at this e point you can see production possibility curve and price line of germany touch each other so e is equilibrium of germany which shows how much germany is producing and consuming and e1 is equilibrium point of india which shows how much india is producing and consuming now we see criticism this theory is based on unrealistic assumption of full employment perfect competition two countries two factor two commodities etc leontief paradox according to this theory countries which are abundant in capital should do export of uh, capital intensive goods but according to leontief research so many countries which are abundant in capital were still doing import of capital intensive goods static theory this theory is very static not applicable in dynamic situation because this theory is based on constant return to scale neglect the demand condition this theory only talk about production supply but without demand production is impossible this theory neglect the demand condition other factor neglected this theory only talk about labor and capital are factor of production but neglect other factor of production like natural resources price neglected 
this theory don't talk about prices if you can sell your goods at higher price in international market then you will not worry about cost but this theory don't talk about price so this is all about hexer olin theory of international trade i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care